Hi, I'm David Plazas, the Opinion and Engagement Director for the Tennessean. We're doing a series of conversations with mayoral candidates for the 2023 mayoral race in Nashville. I'm delighted to have Council Member Sharon Hurt, at large Council Member, who is running for mayor. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you, David? Doing well, thank you. And uh, for the audience, tell us a little bit about who you are and why you're running for office. So I am um, a public servant at heart. I have worked um, for uh, the community for a quarter of a century. Uh, prior to that, I worked for Meharry Medical College for about 20 years and um, serving as a council member for eight years. And I'm very proud to say that in the general election, I was the top vote getter. Uh, during that time and I am running because I think we need to get back to the basics. The Charter, our Constitution, says we the people and we've got to focus on those people. The government exists specifically to serve its citizens and I think that we've gotten away from that and we need to bring it back and make sure that we take care of people, all of our people. The populations that we serve here in Davidson County is diverse more than any other city in Tennessee. And I think we have to be sensitive to that and make sure that we celebrate them and include them all. When I'm out in the community, I hear a lot from citizens who are concerned about taxes, traffic, tourism, the Titan Stadium. Mm -hmm. What are you hearing from citizens and what do they want you to do if you're elected mayor? I think, first of all, what they want us to do is listen to them make sure that their voices are heard. I, I know that the, one of the, the top things that they're concerned about is housing. We've got to make sure that we provide affordable housing. I think we also need to provide some attainable housing, meeting people where they are, make sure that we have places of housing to serve and, and to, un, to serve our unhoused community. Uh, of, of course, people are concerned and they want to make sure that they live in a safe, uh, and, and, and very aesthetically pleasing community. And I think we need to make sure we do that as well. I think it's important for us all to unify. We've got to come together collectively and take care of this city because we all love it. And people come here like I did as a, a brand new 18 year old uh, from Memphis coming to school at Tennessee State and saw that there was hope and opportunity here. Many people come here for that and I think that we in this city have the opportunity to share and give people the dreams that they, uh, they dream of. I think we can fulfill those dreams and fulfill the promises that they come here for. Now you have a unique perspective of being a countywide representative, living in Bellevue, working in North Nashville, mm -hmm. you've lived in Madison and other areas as well. So there are many unique needs across Davidson County. How do you think you can best balance those needs if you talk about, you know, Bellevue or uh, Bells Bend or uh, other places? Around? You know, I, we're more alike than we are different. Everyone wants a quality of life. I just think that we cannot leave any block any community out. I think there have been decisions made in this city historically where there's a certain population that has been um, benefiting from it and then there's populations of people that they've been hurt from those and I think that we've got to find uh, a way to ensure that no one is hurt, that we everyone benefits from the growth that we have here. We've got people that are voting with their feet. They're leaving and we need to make sure that we offer people an opportunity to have a quality of life. About 10 years ago, the New York Times called Nashville the It City. Yes. Um, what are the consequences and responsibilities of that moniker and, and do you think it's been good for Nashville? I, I do think that it's been good in, in many, many ways. Uh, the, the economy uh, in the city and the state is booming as a result of it. But again, I think that there have been too many people that have been left out. I think people have been neglected. We, it, the growth has been so fast and so quick that we were not able to ensure that everyone was uh, cared for. And, and I think that we have to be intentional and deliberate in doing so. And that's what I will do is be intentional, deliberate, that we not lose one person, that we do not forget one block 
but we are inclusive of all people and I will be everyone's mayor. In an earlier meeting with the editorial board and editors, you talked about listening and building relationships. Absolutely. And you mentioned a specific example of the Jefferson Street Cap. Would you talk a little bit about that, about how that became a cautionary tale? Well, I think that um, decisions have been made about applying for funding. And, and while the funding was there, and it could have been used for that, but it also could have been used for broadband. And, and we know that we need better broadband because our kids are using um, uh, technology in order to do their school work and, and all of those things. But when it came to the community, they said they wanted to focus on uh, affordable housing. They wanted to focus on better businesses, better black businesses, and I would say better minority businesses because we've got a lot of women-owned businesses that have also been uh, neglected and, and dismissed and discounted, and we want to make sure we include them. They also wanted people to appreciate the, the culture of that North Nashville community and maintain the integrity. And I think that um, had there been communications and conversations that took place prior to the decision was made to use it for a specific project, uh, I think that it could have been uh, handled a little bit differently and people would have been more engaged and more um, acceptable of the project itself. Well, thank you so much. You have the perspective of being a native Tennessean, yes. currently from West Tennessee, yes. from Memphis specifically. Um, would you talk a little bit about what I perceived, and, and you may have a different opinion, of a, a potential tension between longtime Tennesseans, Nashvilleans, and newcomers who may not have the same idea of what it's like to live here, how do we coexist in a much better way? Well, I think that if people don't know the history, then they're bound to repeat it. I think what we have to do is come together and talk. I mean, we, we have to be neighborly. If We have to take care of each other. We I grew up during a time when they said it takes a village. It still does. I think we all, again, want safe, aesthetically pleasing, uh, quality of life, communities and I think that if the city is showing that this is the way we do it, if we lead in that way, I think others will join in. We all love the city, it offers some wonderful things and I think people uh, would be willing to. I, I don't know if the tension is uh, of the people or just in how it's being done. My mama used to say all the time, it's not what you do, but how you do it. Not what you say, but how you say it. So if people come with uh, um, an opportunity to, let's just sit down and have a conversation and say, this is what's happening, this is what we're gonna do. Are you okay with that? I think the development also has to come to the places where we need it most. I don't think that the decision should be made to where it hurts some people and it helps others. And we have that divide. We've got to make sure that we meet every person where they are. And I think when we do that, we show that, we lead by example, then others will follow. I think this is a city of hope and we can fulfill those dreams. You know, I think that as a promise here, and when you feel it in the air, you feel it when you see, and, and I think in those bad times, like with that flood and tornadoes, uh, when most people uh, feel like it's really catastrophic and tragedy, the Nashville I know shows up, they come together, they make sure that they help one another. And that's the kind of place that I think that we want to see here. Well, thank you. Uh, I know Nashville's been known as Music City, but some are calling it Sports City now. You've got three major league teams mm -hmm. from soccer, football, the Predators. You've got the Nashville Sounds, uh, right. possibly a baseball team sometime in the future. What is your opinion about the, the public's investment in sports? It's one thing to have a sports team, but it's one thing for the public to build a stadium. How do you look at that decision and what the future obligation should be? Well, I, I don't know. I, I think people will, uh, they pay for the things that they want. Um, but I think that they should also benefit for the things that are happening and the growth that's happening here in Nashville. When we make those type of developments, as I said before, 
that it is reaching a certain select group of individuals and it should be for all people. There are job creations, there are contracting and everyone should benefit from it. I don't think people will have a problem if they see how it benefits them. When we, um, the, the, the revenue that's generated from it and, and they're able to use it to take care of the infrastructures and the sidewalks and education and policing and all of the things that we need in order for us to have the kind of communities that people want to live in, I think they're okay with that. You know, as long as it is not disproportionately impacting in a negative way um, people, and that's what we've historically seen. So I would be one to restore the hope in those communities and make sure that we are intentional about spreading the wealth that it not only helps that one group, but it helps all groups. If you're elected, one of your biggest challenges, I believe, will be mending the relationship between the state and metro government. What would be your approach to doing that? I think we have to talk to one another. I think there's a, it's, it's necessary to communicate. And I, and I would take it upon myself to um, try to educate many of those legislat legislators about Nashville, understanding that this city is the most diverse city in the state of Tennessee. So we have to do things differently than what they may be used to doing in the rural areas in which they come. And, and I think that um, the people um, have voiced their um, desires and when they voice the desires, they should listen to them because there has been an outcry for some of the bills that are passing and the refusal and denial of funds. All of those things will negatively impact this city and people are not happy about it. And I think that we need to be able to explain and tell the legislators why that is so and how it's going to negatively impact us and be, you know, and stand strong. In it and, and how we've got to work together. I think we. I think it's going to take um, time, of course, um, but I, I do believe that it can be done. And on the lighter side, I like to ask candidates a little bit about their recommendations for visitors. If they were to spend a weekend in Nashville, what two or three things should they eat, do, see while they're here? Well, first of all, you know they got to have some Princess Hot Chicken. That's the first thing, and they must see the National Museum of African American Music. It is beautiful, it's educational, it's interactive, and, and it's, it's inspiring. And I think that they must go and see that, absolutely. I think it's also very important for them to see some of our um, beautiful um, buildings, like um, the, the Fisk Chapel. Uh, the Parthenon, those places that make Nashville what it is. And we have, um, of course, um, we are known for education and for our uh, civil rights uh, movement. And there are some places that we have downtown, the witness walls and murals and things that kind of tell the story. And there's also the Gateway to Heritage on Jefferson Street that gives quite a bit of history about that entire community. And it also speaks on the religion and athletics of that community and, and of course the music. And, and though many people see Nashville as country music, there are different genres of music that are here. And I think that um, the Fisk Jubilee Singers uh, having won a Grammy last year and the Tennessee State University Aristocratic Bands having won this year is amazing and people actually need to just go and uh, see the sacred grounds in which both of those um, uh, organizations uh, reside because I think it is um, it's hollow ground. Well, thank you for sharing that. Any final thoughts for the viewers before we conclude? Well, you know, I, I, I have done this work in every aspect from affordable housing to transportation, economic development, 
for the past uh, quarter of a century. I am built as a leader, have been all of my life, it's in my DNA, and I am going to lead this city to places that we know that it has been meant to be. Not, we'll never be what we once were, but what we are meant to be, a city for all people, one with hope, one that cares, and we will fulfill the promise that Nashville has given to every individual who's here. We're going to celebrate our uh, legacy residents. We want them to know that they have a place here. They've given so much. We want to give back to them. They don't have to move because so many people are moving and they are voting with their feet by going to other places. We're going to have to make sure that we keep those like residents here and we want to welcome those that are coming and let them see that this is the place to be. And to the viewers, please keep up with news, information, updates, interviews, and even our debates for the 2023 national mayoral election on Tennessean.com. Thank you very much, Councilmember Hurt. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely.